Welcome to Fraser Mac Gaming, I'm Fraser Mac. This is the latest video in my Fraser Mac Gaming news series. I'll go through the latest news for the Switch, cover the games coming to everyone's favourite hybrid system and have the occasional rant when something pisses me off. Last week, while waiting for any news on Nintendo Direct, we got the surprise announcement that there was an imminent Indie Highlights presentation. These were a new presentation organised by Nintendo of Europe, with the first coming last summer during Gamescom. So which games did they reveal in the January Indie Highlights? Which games will I be picking up? And how did it compare to last time? Find out after this. During Gamescom last year, we got the very first Indie Highlights presentation and it came completely out of the blue. It was a short presentation that gave release dates or information on 16 indie games coming to the Switch. Check out my video in the top right of the screen now if you want a full rundown on the games. Awesome games that were shown in that video included The Messenger, Bad North and my game of the year, Monster Boy in the Cursed Kingdom. The standard was pretty high overall and most of the games covered have now been released. The January indie highlights had a lot to live up to and without a full Nintendo Direct in January so far... We were all looking for some big announcements to fill the gap. So what did we get and how did it stack up compared to last time? The show started off highlighting some games that were available right there and then. Now the games were available straight away but two of them I couldn't really care less about. Goat Simulator The Goatee was first up. It's a light hearted simulation game with some crazy gameplay which despite some pretty poor reviews has sold very well on multiple platforms. I read somewhere that it had made around $12 million back in 2015, so that's some serious money. It got a lot of coverage on YouTube, and I'm guessing it's fun time if you're the right age and the right mood. I get why it's come to Switch, because it will sell, but at £27 in the UK and $30 in the US, I'm staying well clear. Another game that released during the video was When Ski Lifts Go Wrong. It's a physics-based construction puzzle game that can get very bloody for your skiers. Like the title suggests, your building will go wrong and part of the fun is watching the epic fails and hilarious consequences of your shoddy workmanship. There are all kinds of gameplay options available and you can share your work online at the touch of a button. When ski lifts go wrong, we'll set you back £15 in the UK and about $15 in the US. But again, it's not for me. For me, the show really got going and I was very happy when Unruly Heroes was announced. I featured it in my most anticipated indie games for Switch 2019 video. Click on the card in the top right if you've not watched it already. I had just finished recording it when Unruly Heroes was actually announced to be coming out. It's a beautiful 2D action adventure hack and slash combat game made by former Ubisoft employees. They worked on games in the Rayman series and many other big Ubisoft titles. You can definitely see the influences on the art style and the gameplay throughout and it's a really solid game. I downloaded it straight away and I'm really enjoying it so far. There are four playable characters that you can switch between at any time. They have very specific playstyles and abilities and you really do need to switch between them to solve the puzzles and overcome platforming sections. The controls, I will say, are a little bit floaty at times but the art style, the different abilities and the variation in the gameplay are very cool. I'll show more on the channel soon and you can pick up a copy on the eShop for $17.99 in the UK and $20 in the US. One of the big indie games we've all been waiting for on the Switch for a while now is Wargroove. It's been in development for some time and I expected it to feature in a full Nintendo Direct because of the hype behind it. We've been waiting with anticipation for confirmation on our release date and the presentation did not let us down. We got a very cool anime trailer and the news that it's coming to the Switch February 1st. Yep, Wargroove is coming February 1st, it's already available to pre-order and I've got it on my Switch ready to go as soon as it is available. It's a classic turn-based strategy game harking back to Advance Wars and it's added a lot of new multiplayer and online options to get us all excited. I can't wait to dive in and the fact it's releasing so soon is very cool. It's $15.99 in the UK and $20 in the US and it's another game I'll feature on the channel soon. Now I'm usually a big fan of almost every shoot 'em up or shooter out there and everything that drops on the Switch I look to check it out, see what it's all about. It's a classic genre and I've had a lot of fun through the years blowing stuff up and being blown up multiple times. I'd usually be hyped for a new unexpected title coming to the Switch 
But when you mix it with a rhythm game, I'm not such a good fan of shooters like that. I've never been a big fan of rhythm games and Double Kick Heroes, although it has some cool artwork and looks interesting, I'm not sure it's going to be for me. It's due to release summer 2019, but it's one I'll most likely pass on. We got 9 games in total during the Indie Highlights presentation, and there's still a couple of big games to come, so stay tuned for those. Forger is another retro-inspired 2D pixelated game with a mix of gameplay elements from awesome titles such as Stardew Valley, Terraria, and obviously the Zelda series. You start with a small patch of land, and it's up to you to farm, craft, and explore the surrounding area to develop and grow. There are a lot of RPG type simulator games on the Switch now, but the Forger sounds like it has a lot going for it. It has a simplistic but cute art style, and there are also puzzles to solve, secrets to find, and dungeons to raid. This could be a game that you sink dozens of hours into, and it's due to release soon. I'll keep you posted when Hot Frog and Humble Bundle release more details. Now Chucklefish are slowly developing a reputation for developing and publishing awesome titles on the Switch. They were of course involved in bringing Stardew Valley to our favourite hybrid system and they are the developers of Wargroove. I've seen a number of the titles they're helping publish at gaming events and they have a lot more to come. We got the first glimpse at another title from them with Inmost during the Indie Highlights presentation. It is an atmospheric 2D platformer which has a combination of games like Celeste, Hollow Knight and Chasm. It has brooding dark visuals, the promise of a deeper story set across two worlds and of course beautiful pixelated artwork. There are three unique playable characters, a large castle to explore and there are deadly traps to evade and also set yourself to kill enemies. Inmost is due out 2019 and I'd also recommend you keep an eye out for other titles coming from Chucklefish such as The Siege and The Sandfox and Pathway. The last couple of games on the list are two of my personal favourites for sure. A classic RPG game I enjoyed a lot on the Switch last year was Cosmic Star Heroine. Now the next game up has a brighter aesthetic and is more of an action RPG but it gives off similar retro RPG vibes that have got me very excited. I didn't know about CrossCode before the presentation but it got me straight away. It has the same beautiful 16-bit 2D graphics that Cosmic Star Heroine used and it promises a much more lengthy adventure of between 30 to 80 hours. There are 7 unique areas with lots of hidden secrets, over 120 enemies, 30 bosses to conquer and expansive dungeons and puzzles to solve within them. We got a lot of games inspired by the classic 2D Zelda games and rightly so. This looks like it could be another classic and I'm itching to know more about when I can play it. Crosscode is out 2019 and hopefully there'll be announcements from Radical Fish Games and Deck 13 soon. Now Wargroove was one of the most anticipated games coming into this presentation, but the undoubted star of the show came from Image Inform Games. They've been teasing a new instalment to their epic Steam World series and they provided the first look at the latest genre switch for the beloved series. SteamWorld Quest Hand of Gilgamesh is a card based RPG featuring a typically beautiful hand drawn world and intense battles. You'll have to craft your own deck and choose from over 100 unique punch cards. There are plenty of chests full of gold, there's dragons, knights, magic and turn based battles to find and enjoy all the way throughout this game. It's a new genre for the SteamWorld series but the first outing under the Thunderful banner comprised of Image and Form and Zoink games, will surely be a hit if their previous titles are anything to go by. I'm not usually a card based game player, but I'm sure I'm going to check this one out, and I cannot wait for more details of when in 2019 exactly this will get a release. So those are the 9 games that were shown as part of the Indie Highlights presentation. Now it did have some awesome titles, I was very excited to get to download and play Unreally Heroes, and obviously Wargroove, Crosscode and SteamWorld Quest look like definite buys for me. But, compared to the number of titles and the quality of the games from Indie Highlights in August, this show is good, but it's not great. Gamescom, which coincided with the Indie Highlights in August, is of course one of the biggest gaming conferences of the year. So a lot of titles wanted to hype their release. Here's hoping we obviously get another one this year. The current titles will tide us over especially with no sign of a January Direct, but it's left me wanting more. Overall, we'll take what we've got and I'll enjoy which ones are coming out that I'm really looking forward to. But which titles did you like? Are there any you'll be buying? And what other indie titles would you like to see released on Switch in 2019? 
Let me know in the comments down below because as always, I do like to read and interact with anyone who's following the content. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. Check out my other videos as I bring a lot of news and reviews of all kinds of Switch related content and I'll see you on the next video.